Hi, and welcome to this free 3D Blender tutorial made possible by the Wayland Free Public Library. My name is Eric Carlson. I'll be walking you through some basics of Blender. So to get started today, the first step will be to go to blender.org and download Blender, which is a free 3D program, and it's a pretty good 3D program. It's capable of a lot of the same stuff you would see in a high-end, expensive program. So it's a really great place to get started if you're new to 3D or wanting to just explore a little bit. So the first thing we'll do is go to blender.org and click on the download Blender button. And it might be a separate version number here depending on which, uh, which version you're at or when you're watching this movie. So you'll click on that and then choose your operating system. So for me that'll be Windows, but you might be on Mac uh, or any one of these. So just choose the right one, download it, and uh, it's, it's very simple. So uh, just to show you quickly what we'll be making today, uh, we'll be making a very simple house, so with just a simple roof that we pull up here and a chimney. And so we're using a very simple object here because the purpose of this first tutorial is for people who are very new to 3D um, and just to get the basics of moving around in, in 3D and building simple objects and a couple of the tools just to get your feet a little wet. And then after this tutorial in the next one we'll cover some some more advanced tools to add more details to this house uh, things like dormers, a door, windows, stuff like that so but for now we're just going to start with the very basics so when you open Blender go to a new file here you'll see this so you'll have a cube and you'll have some other objects in here so just very basic and so there's a lot of interface here a lot of buttons and it's easy to get bogged down by those in the beginning, but if you just start with the basics, it's easy then to start building on that and learning more and more as you go. So first of all, I would recommend uh, for using Blender that you have a three button mouse. So that's a mouse with a middle scroll wheel that can also be pressed as a button. Uh, and also I would recommend having a keyboard with a numeric keypad on the right side, because both of these come in very handy for 3D uh, since you use the middle mouse button a lot, and then for your view modes, especially in Blender, you'll use the numeric keypad. Now, if you don't have those, that's okay. Uh, so I'll quickly show you how to uh, cover that if you don't have them. So you go to the File menu, and then User Preferences. I'll bring that over here. And then we'll go to Input. And so for a mouse, you would click Emulate 3 Button Mouse. And so I'll tell you what the key commands would be for this, and I'd recommend that you just write them down since I'll be referring to it as the middle mouse button. So I would just write down that middle mouse button is Alt left mouse button. So just Alt left click, and that is your rotate tool. And then for the pan tool, that'll be Alt shift middle mouse button. And then for the zoom tool, that will be Alt control middle mouse button. And so I'd recommend writing those down, and it it might seem like a lot of keys to be pressing, but once you start practicing it a little bit, I, I promise it'll come more naturally. So we'll uncheck that, and then if you don't have a keyboard with a numeric keypad, like if you were on a laptop, for example, you would want to click Emulate Numpad, and then what that means is by using the numbers above the keyboard, just the regular, you know, horizontal single row of numbers, that will give you the same functionality. And we won't be using those in this first tutorial, but in the next tutorial we might cover that a little bit, and that just gives you some of the view presets, like going to a top view, a front view, stuff like that. So I'll uncheck that, go back here. So our first step is to uh, figure out the move controls here. So in order to rotate, you will want to press down the middle mouse button, click and hold that, and just drag the mouse around, and that'll let you rotate left to right, up and down, uh, just lets you get a different angle of view, which you'll be using a lot. All of these you'll be using a lot as you work through Blender. Uh, so that is the rotate tool. Another one, which might come pretty naturally if you're used to scrolling in a website uh, up and down, is just using the middle mouse wheel. So just scroll up and scroll down, and that'll let you zoom in and out of your scene so you can see more objects at once, or you can get in close to look at small details. The next one will be pan. So to pan, which is to kind of move left to right, up and down, you hold down shift and middle mouse button. And that lets you move around. 
So you just shift middle mouse button and then drag in whichever direction you want to pan. So by using a combination of these, you can get around to see all kinds of different sides of your objects as you're working, which is really handy. Just just like a sculptor might want to move around something they're sculpting and see it from different angles and make sure it's coming together in the right way. So those are the basics of your move controls, and I would practice those a little bit, and just uh, over time you'll just get more comfortable with them, and before you know it, you'll be just zipping around. So next we're going to start building our house. So we'll just cover a few basic tools in this tutorial in order to be able to build the basic house I showed you. So first thing we'll do is go down here to this menu and go to edit mode. So now that we're in edit mode, we can start manipulating this object. So the first step will be loop, cut, and slide. So we'll click on that. And then we'll hover over one of these edges. It doesn't matter which one. And left click once. And then we're going to right click, which will place a cut in the middle. And one thing I should note, uh, with Blender, it's a little bit counterintuitive the way that the mouse button works. Uh, so let me go back to object mode here. So in most programs you're used to using the left mouse button for everything. Now in Blender the right mouse button is used for a lot of stuff. So if you click with the left mouse button it cre it moves this little crosshair here which is called the 3D cursor and that starts in the middle of the scene and that's used kind of for more advanced uh, modeling techniques and uh, different modes that you might encounter in Blender later and it's here's an example of where, where you might use it. If you place it over there, then if you go to add mesh cube, it would place a new cube over in that spot. Uh, so that is handy in some cases, but it can be a little bit distracting here because really you need to use right mouse button to select objects. So I'll do control Z a few times to get rid of that object I made. And then to recenter this, this is probably the only hotkey I'll ask you to memorize. You hit Shift C, and that puts it right in the middle. Okay, so so now we'll go back to edit mode here. So we have that cut around the object, and so in order to pull this piece up, we'll want to be in edge mode. So we'll go down here, click on this guy. So now we can select edges. And then we'll right click once on the top edge, so we have just that selected. And then we will drag up using this blue arrow. And that starts to give us our house. And here I'm just kind of moving around with, uh, with the mouse button tools. So we raise that and we get a kind of roof. So next step is let's add a chimney to this. So we'll go back to our loop cut and slide, hover over this and then left click once and then here instead of right clicking which we did earlier which automatically centers this we're going to choose where we want it to go so I'll go pretty close to the edge and then left click once and that'll create the back edge of our chimney go back to loop cut and slide and we'll want to make sure we're hovering on the right edge so we have a cut along this top of the roof so click left click and then move over and right click or sorry left click again and now we have two of our edges for our chimney. We'll go back to loop, cut, and slide. And then hover over these guys, which are perpendicular to the top of the roof. So left click once, and then go to about you know, somewhere around here. This doesn't have to be exact. And then we'll go back to loop, cut, and slide. Left click. And then left click again. So now we have this space in here. That'll be our chimney. So in order to pull that out, we want to extrude that using the extrude tool. So first we need to select that face. So we'll go down here to face select and then right click on the face and then go over here to extrude. And now we have a couple extrude options here. We have extrude individual and extrude region. Now extrude region would be handy if we had a bunch of these together and we wanted to make sure they stuck together as a clump. But, and then extrude individual, in this case, would extrude all of these as separate, not connected faces. So you'd have four different pieces moving out. Now in our case, we're only using one. So extrude individual works fine. Either one would work. So we'll click that. And then as you start to drag, you'll see how it starts to pull out of the house like this. So 
what we want to do is we want to have it go upward, not at this kind of weird angle. So while this is going like this, we're going to hit the Z key once and then once more. And now it's snapping to the Z axis, which in Blender is up and down. Now if we had hit X, it'll go on the X axis, which is side to side, and then the Y axis is front and back. So hit Z until we have it locked to the Z axis, and then once we're there, we'll raise it as high as we want, and then left click. Okay, and now as you start to rotate around, you see you have this chimney. Now the chimney's at a bit of a slant, so I think we want to have this be a little bit more of a level chimney, kind of more traditional. So to do that, we'll go down, left click on edge select, and select this edge, which is kind of low, and then using this blue arrow, we'll raise it up. Now, you'll need to move around to different angles in order to get a sense of where it's at. And it looks like this edge is a little bit low, so we'll bring that up. And we're not going for perfection. If we were, we would probably go into one of our special views that I talked about earlier with the numpad, but we won't worry about that for now. It doesn't have to be perfect. So, we've got a little chimney. Uh, and so one final adjustment I'd make is it looks like this house is a little bit tall for my tastes. I just, I want it to be a stubbier house. So we'll rotate around so we can see the bottom here. And now we have all these faces we'll want to select. So we'll go to face select mode and then using right click and then shift. We'll shift right click and go through and select all of these faces. And you see we have these extra lines here which were made when we made these cuts for the chimney and other objects, so it starts to get more complex as you add more objects, or add more uh, aspects to your house. So now we'll go to a relative side view and we'll pull up in that blue arrow until it's kind of a stub of your house. So looks pretty good, so we'll go click on object mode and now you can look around and view your handiwork. So that about wraps it up for this tutorial, just the basics of Blender. Uh, we've covered rotating, tracking, zooming, and then adding other basic elements like loop cuts to be able to lift up the roof and raise the chimney. And then in order to raise the chimney, we went into extrude mode and we saw how to lock that to the Z axis and then adjust things from different angles. So I hope this was helpful and look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Thanks.